So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give an overview of what we're working on at a fairly high level. And then right after me, Daryl and Tim are gonna come out and get into more details. I am gonna focus more on the rack level, some of the testing and evaluation we're doing there. But first I'm gonna start off with an overview of the group. So our group's makeup is quite diverse. We have liquid cooling component suppliers, we have solution providers, technical experts, ODMs, and end users. We're developing interface specs uh, for blind mate liquid cooling solutions that include features for the rack. Uh, focus areas include blind mate specific rack frame interfaces. I'll show some images of that. Um, support brackets, blind mate manifolds, which are unique than say off the shelf manifolds, blind mate valves, hose and tubing solutions. And when I'm talking about hosing tubing solutions, I'm talking about the ones used inside the IT gear. And we're also working on some IT gear concepts. This is the group that we have as far as suppliers. You can see we have a quite, quite a diverse group here and they're all contributors in their own ways. It's been a really good uh, collaborative effort. So I'm gonna go over the concept a little bit here. Uh, the blind mate solution has the manifolds on each side of the rack, hot and cold are separated. And you'll notice if you've seen some of the V3 presentations, the bus bars in the middle, and we try to maximize the space between the bus bars and the manifolds for rear service items like frues, like modules or fans and those type of things. The IT gear features the plug side of the interface. The manifolds feature the socket side. All connections are at the rear of the rack and the valves are designed to self-align during mating. The valves themselves, they're blind mate driftless. Again, they self-align, much like a blind mate connector if you're familiar with IT gear. The socket valve has an alignment cone that brings them into alignment as it shows in the video there. And the plug has the ability to float and actually rotate as well to come into alignment to create the connection and let fluid flow. Um, the design it features really large uh, allowable misalignment, allowable angle um, offset as well and it has a pretty long working range or stroke, which is the working range when the valve, the fluid actually flows in the mate direction. And the rear of the plug connects to a tubing via a, a barb fitting. Manifolds. Um, what's unique about blind mate manifolds and what we're developing is they need to be precise. All the interfaces where it touches the rack, where the ports sit, all need to be within specific tolerances to allow for everything to work together as a system. We can't, we don't, we can't just take a regular square tube and make this work. There's some secondary ops. However, we start the process with standard off the shelf tubing, which at the beginning of the program was not the case. So that's a pretty big, uh, and Daryl will get more into that later. Um, uh, and the, the manifolds have the sockets mounted them with a threaded stud and an EPDM seal between the valve and the manifold port. The IT gear, um, we're not making a, uh, a, an actual detailed spec of IT gear. We're developing the interfaces as well as some reference me mechanisms to help drive the design. Um, and I'll get to the mechanism in a second here. But it features an injector mechanism to assist with mating the chassis to the manifolds and overcome fluid pressure and spring pressure. So as you're starting to put it in, there's quite a bit of force there. So we had to develop a mechanism uh, to overcome that. The next slide will have a picture of that. Um, and again, the, they, they are panel mounted uh, on the plug side at the rear in that little pocket there where the arrow is, so it's protected, and it's put on with a jam nut. Now here's a picture of the gear looking from the top. This is our mock-up system. You'll see some co-plates and manifolds and internal tubing that just kind of show what we're using. This is what we're using for developing the valves and then all the rack level testing. And you'll see in the lower left there, those are the ejector, and we call them injectors because they're designed to push the system in and overcome pressure. Uh, and then on the right, you see some pictures of some of the internal tubing and hoses that we've been looking at. The frame itself, we're a big part of ORV3 from the beginning is we've been developing it from the beginning, thinking about blind mate. So um, we've been defining the rack interfaces and the support brackets for the manifolds. If you look at the picture there, I'll get to more details in later slides, but those blue features there um, are all add-ons for liquid cooling. And you can take a standard rack, bolt these things on, and it's blind mate ready. So the idea is we're not gonna hopefully have a separate PID. We're gonna reference the standard design and it's basically config to order. 
Um, and again, like I said, we designed with Glenway in mind. So there's some more detailed pictures of some of the interfaces. So on the left picture there, starting from bottom to top, we have a lower, mid, and upper interface brackets. Basically what happens is you take the blind mate manifold, you install it in a rack, tighten everything up with the nuts, and it's all registered and aligned with all the features either in the brackets or in the rack. So let's talk about some of the advantages of blind mate. And fundamentally, this is one of the big reasons why we're doing this. Matter being a hyperscaler, service time and ease of service are super important. So for us, lowering impact on service. We don't have manual connections where service techs or service personnel are having to connect or disconnect things. It's an automatic mate process uh, during the installation process using those injectors. It reduces service time, less human error. You know, what kind of error you could forget. At, say you go to remove them and you connect with the wrong connection or you forget to connect one. You walk away later and things are hot. You wonder why and you come back, oh, so that, that helps prevent that. We don't have hoses hanging out of the chassis when you're doing service, they can get pinched or damaged. Um, and then I'm gonna maybe move here to more of the gear side of things, IT gear side. The benefits are it's a compact solution. It only uses a small corner in each rear of the chassis. There's no front panel space needed for hoses coming out of the front. And because of that, it allows more design flexibility in IT gear design. Um, rack level testing. We do, we do testing at all levels, but I'm gonna focus at least in my presentation on the rack level. Um, so we do mate cycle testing, where we take the chassis, we, we mate them, do mate cycle testing, durability. We do a, a pressure drop before all the testing and after to make sure there's no degradation in per thermal performance. We also measure mate forces. Uh, and then um, that picture there in the crate, we do a lot of distribution testing. Uh, transportation testing, and the idea is for, for Meta, we ship our racks pre-configured. So we wanna make sure that they arrive at our data center for integration in one piece, and there's no leaks, and no issues. So we actually tested the racks full of fluid. Again, we did impedance testing before and after to make sure there was no degradation, and we looked for leaks, and uh, we just finished this test last month, and we passed it successfully. Um, our thermal team is working really hard on this. These bullets don't give it justice. Uh, they're doing flow distribution testing, and one of the big things we had challenges on was getting consistent uh, numbers and test, test setups and, and, and getting repeatable numbers. So they moved to a, an orifice design where they can basically have a set impedance to try out the, the uh, evaluation for the different tests, which really simplified things. Uh, we also, there was variation of flow analysis based on at least initial results with all the valves, was uh, uh, under 10% variation no matter what manifold vendor. This is an, a diagram of the system setup. In the middle set, picture there, there, you can see on a bench, there's a, a CDU that's pumping fluid and keeping the temperature at a certain point. And then we have various pressure transducers throughout the system to measure and uh, do the evaluations for flow distribution. So uh, let's talk about general updates. We've done a lot of work on specification and test plan optimization as we move forward and learn more. Uh, that's been a big team effort. And then on the valve testing, we have had some issues. Um, we've had most recently in our most recent prototypes, we had higher than expected forces. We realized that it was based on the valves because you notice how they float. They're very sensitive to the hose type uh, and routing in terms of hose stiffness. Um, we also did some flow testing where we do interoperability testing and same supplier testing. And we saw some variations in that flow performance that we're working to address with the suppliers that need to adjust. For example, one may need to release its impedance, one may be to increase it to make it all come in line with a band that we're shooting for. Um, and right now, we're in the middle of brainstorming, prototyping, different improvements uh, in the designs. And uh, so far, the initial results on these, some of these prototypes are looking really promising. So call to action. Um, we have the cooling environments uh, wiki there. We have the cold plate work stream. So every month when we have the cold plate call, my team gives an update on how things are going. We operate under a CLA, basically uh, somewhat like an NDA. So we share things as they go along and uh, get, provide the team um, and the outside world uh, updates on how we're doing. You can also check things out on uh, the different wikis that are listed there. I'm gonna hold off on questions because Daryl and Tim are gonna come up and provide more details and we'll answer questions at the end. Thank you.